Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, moni mule wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jan Lee and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We're so delighted and so very, very honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, Ghana, Stitcher Radio, Himalaya, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Sherry Fink. Sherry is our favorite mermaid. She's returning to the show to celebrate her brand new children's book. It's called The Little Monster. Before we invite Sherry back into the studio, we want to invite you to connect with us on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids. At Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. Great Reading With Your Kids page on Pinterest. And on Twitter, we are at Gently Magic. We'd love for you to connect with us. That's the best way to enter our book giveaways. We love giving away books, and it's really easy to enter. All you need to do is to like and share our book giveaway announcement. See how easy that is? And another great way to connect with us is by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Sign up for our free newsletter, and also you can uh, click the contact button and send us a message. Joining us right now from Orange County in California, our guest is returning. She is the the driving force behind the whimsical world. She's here to celebrate her brand new picture book. It's called The Little Monster. Please welcome back to the show my favorite mermaid, Sherry Fink. Hey, Sherry, how are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so excited to be back. I'm really excited to have you back on and uh, and celebrate a new addition to your little uh is do I call it your little series because you have the little rose That's and the right. little unicorn and little monster now. This is so exciting. Thank you. Yes, it's my 14th book if you can believe it. Wow. <laughs> and the the seventh in the little series. Oh, that's amazing. Now you did not as I recall you you didn't dream of being a children's author. You had a different tra- trajectory earlier in your life, right? Well, when I was really, really little, I wanted to be many things. A writer, a teacher, a mother, a princess, and a mermaid. And as you know, I have the best possible job because I can do all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, but in the meantime, I climbed the corporate ladder. I was doing marketing in a corporate environment for over 12 years. And I was, you know, I, I still wanted to be a creative person and make a big difference in the world, but I didn't know what that path was going to look like. And I was actually bullied in the workplace, which inspired me to write my very first book called The Little Rose. And when I left the corporate world, I thought I was going to be doing consulting, but then I had this inspiration through a series of serendipitous events some encouragement to release that book. And once I did, it became a number one bestseller on Amazon, stayed at number one for over 60 weeks, helped kids, um, empower kids deal with bullying situations so that they wouldn't, you know, dim dim their light the way that I did in my adulthood. And it changed the trajectory of my life and started making all those childhood dreams come true. So you that's, just never know what kind of gold you have in a drawer. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really fantastic. It's it's such a drag that you know we've we've been openly talking about the issue of bullying for a long time. I know myself, my uh, educational magic career really kind of uh, went full bore into the anti-bullying message back around 2003. So we've been, you know, as a society, we've been talking about this for at close to 20 years, and and it's still an issue. It's probably more of an issue in the adult world these days than it ever has been, I think. Yeah, I think all those bullies that were being formed back 20 years ago have grown up. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think it's really important to give kids 
the toolkit, Mm -hmm. you know, so they can deal with these types of situations because you just can't control life. I think Mm -hmm. the, the pandemic has taught us that we can't control everything. All we can do is try to make the best of it. And I think that's what you and I do, right? We help kids learn how to process things in such a way that they can actually make the best of it. Absolutely. So um, I'm really, really happy about that. Yeah, yeah. So tell us all about the little monster, please. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So he's afraid of the dark, <laughs> and he tries everything to overcome his fear in time for his big birthday sleepover. And I was inspired to write it because at the beginning of the pandemic, I was receiving notes from parents saying, hey, all of a sudden, my kids are afraid of the dark. Do you have anything for that? And I was like, you know, I really don't. But I think that was a very um, interesting way for for the fear of the pandemic to manifest in children's lives, because that's something that, you know, is totally relatable for them. So I thought, well, what if there's a little monster um, that's afraid of the dark and he's getting his room for the very first time? You know, he was sharing with his big brother and he's preparing for his big birthday sleepover, his first ever. And he's too afraid to tell people that he's afraid of the dark because monsters are supposed to love the dark. Mm. And so that really got me going on it. And then I thought, what if it could be a glow in the dark book? Ooh. And so that was very exciting to me because, you know, it, after you've done multiple books, like you really want to keep innovating and there's, you know, there's historical things you can do that are the standard. Um, but glow in the dark is something that's special and, yeah. and unique. So this, and the thing about it that goes so well with the social emotional learning aspect of the book is that the child will be reading with the parent and they'll have the flashlight on, you know, reading the story and the kid will say, turn the flashlight off because after every page, they're going to want to see what elements are glowing on it. Oh. So they're inadvertently learning to have fun in the dark, right? That's so, so cool. cool. Yeah, that is really, really cool. I was trying to picture in my mind, you know, what, you know, does, can you, can you read the words in the dark? But this sounds, this sounds even better. Yeah. So each page has elements that glow. And when you have the flashlight on it and then turn the flashlight off, you will see the luminescence of That's those cool. items on each page. Yes. So it's going to be fun for them to go through the book and see exactly what is glowing on each each page. Yeah. Now, I know we have a lot of authors who listen to the show, and you have a lot of authors who are your fan. Uh, without get, getting giving away any trade secrets, how mm-hmm. difficult was that process of, of adding the glow-in-the-dark element to the book? You know, it was a learning curve. Uh, uh-huh. It's something that I have never done before, and I don't know anyone who has as a publisher. Um, so working with our printer, who had done projects like that before, um, they were really able to guide me on, you know, what type of color choices. Because there's there's a lot more colors than I thought were, would be available. Like you can do blues and yellows and oranges, and I chose the, the neon green. Um, and then the other thing is when you coat – this is with a learning for me. When you coat the pages and the cover specifically with that ink, it does dull the color a bit. Ah. So when we, you know, did the original artwork, I had a certain color in mind. Once we applied the glow in the dark ink on top, it was a little dull. And I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't like the dullness of this. I want it to scream, I glow in the dark, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and to me, that's a neon color. So the printer was really wonderful about working with me and testing a bunch of different things. And we ended up having to do a special um, ink that was like a bright neon green to counterbalance the coating on the cover. So, um, so yeah, big learnings, um, big investment. But I really wanted kids to have that big reward. You know, they've been through so much. Like, let's make this fun or super fun book for them to read. And I think the more fun it is, the more likely they are to internalize that wonderful um, message that it's okay to be safe and have fun in the dark. Yeah, yeah. And that can be so difficult. What so difficult for kids and for parents, because after all, how do you help a kid learn how not to become afraid of the dark, but to let the kid be in the dark. Yeah. 
yeah, it's like you, you get more confident by experiencing it mm-hmm. and surviving it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and part of the little monster's journey is he's trying to hide it at first, you know, and yep. he's trying to like get his, his favorite stuffed animal and he's got his superhero pajamas on and, you know, he's doing little things to like try to increase his courage, but he ultimately discovers the moon. He's like, oh, my, I've had everything closed up so tight. But when he opens the window to the moon, he feels better. You know, he feels safer. So it's like the moon is looking after him uh, at night while he sleeps. And then, of course, he has a party and a whole bunch of glowing things take place. Like, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm curious where, you know, that you, you were mentioning how difficult it was and what an investment – you know that, that it took a big investment to to get the glow in the dark to happen. Um, that takes a certain kind of of courage as a as a businesswoman, um, because a lot of people would sit back and think, eh, "Yeah, it's a cute idea, but man, it's an awful lot of money, and I don't know if this is going to work, and it's going to return. Uh, we going to get a good return on this." Where do you? find that courage as a business person to to go out there and try this something like this you know that's a really great question i think nine years ago when i had just started maybe i had only been doing this for a year i definitely would have felt that way i would have been very hesitant and cautious but at this point in my career I don't want to just keep producing the same thing over and over. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I want to create wow, uh, wow experiences for kids. I want magical moments and I want them it to be their favorite book, not just a book they like. Mm-hmm. So I think in order to do that, um, sometimes that requires a bigger vision, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I get an idea in my head. I've always been this way. I get obsessed with something. Like <laughs> once I've decided that that's what I want, there's very little that can stand in the way of me getting it, you know, and if I need to raise more money to get it, then I'll sell for more books and get some more money and do it. You know, I think that's really um, the key because as a business person, you know, you have to balance that. You have these great visions and you want to produce all these amazing things, but you also have a budget, right? Yep. And for us, we run a debt-free business, which is great in many ways and also, you know, more um, – some people might look at it as more limiting in other ways, but I look at it as liberation because you never, ever have to worry. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're not dependent on that next sale. And there's something about unleashing that requirement of a sale that makes you more magnetic and attractive to people and makes them want to buy from you. So I think um, I have a lot of confidence in this story because it is so sweet. And there are so many children who struggle with this mm-hmm. that I feel that there will definitely be a return whenever we, you know, are able to go and do our regular event schedule again. I know it'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you will also tell me a little bit about another really fun project that you and your husband, Derek Taylor Kent, who's been a regular guest on the show, uh, have launched. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I am in love with this project. Okay. So, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we had to put everything on hold, we went through and made a wish list of everything that we had been dreaming of doing, but put on hold, you know, just because we were busy doing other things. But then when we couldn't do the other things, we're like, well, now's a great opportunity. Let's just work down the list. And one of our great big goals was to create a video books program. And we did it. It's called Whimsical World Bedtime Stories. And it's so cool. It's basically like almost like an animation, but it's not animated. Mm -hmm. But you're listening to us read the book while you're watching, you know, the illustrations. And there's movement and there's sound effects and there's music. You know, Derek Audio produced these. And they're so engaging and fun. And it's a great option for teachers, even teachers who are doing um, virtual learning right now, because they can go to the site, they can purchase one, they can own it for a lifetime, or they can just rent it for the day. You get, I think, 24 to 48 hours Mm -hmm. on a rental. Mm -hmm. So it's great for teachers and for families. And we have all of our books available. The two newest books, um, The Little Monster and then Derek's new book, The Leaning Tower of Pizza, will be available as bedtime stories within the next 30 days. But all of our other books are on there, and it's just this beautiful library of 
awesomeness. Like, <laughs> I, it makes me so happy when I watch the bedtime stories. I'm like, wow, it just brings the books to life in a new way. And I also think it's really great for parents who maybe maybe are a little burned out of doing the bedtime story, mm-hmm. you know, time. This is a great option for them. They can just pull up the device that the kids are already comfortable on, you know, pull the video up that they've purchased, and boom, there they go. Yeah. <laughs> Off to sleep. <laughs> You know, we've talked a lot about the, the 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 benefits of reading aloud to our kids, and those those benefits are so there are so many benefits. It's it's awesome. But you're right. There are sometimes when parents aren't able to read with their kids. Maybe they're exhausted after a long day at work. Maybe they're not feeling well. Uh, it's it's a great option for families to be able to sit down and experience the, one of your little books or one of Derek's books together. And I think it's a great way to start a, a tradition that that's really big in our family. We we just um, visited my my daughter in Baltimore, and uh, we didn't sit down and read together, but we sat down and we watched a couple of movies together. And that can be a lot of fun, too, just sitting and talking about the movie. And it's just another way to start that lifelong conversation that we can have with our kids. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's fun to hear the author read it. I mean, mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with audiobooks now. Yeah. You know, I love hearing the author read to me, and I'm not even getting a visual. This is combining the best of both worlds. Yeah. So I... I'm just so excited. We worked very, very hard. It was a year in the making, and we released it, and it's just so cool. Like, we have previews of all of, like, there's little trailers for all the books up on our uh, YouTube page at Whimsical World, and on our website, whimsicalworldbooks.com, if you click video books, you can check out all the info about it. They're very affordable, but it costs way less than the, the hardcover book. It's just a nice way to be able to get those messages and the fun of those stories out to a lot of people, you know, not just people who have the privilege of being at an event that we happen to be at, you right, know, right. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can hear the excitement in your voice and I agree with you. I absolutely love audiobooks, but I especially love audiobooks that have, that are, they're being narrated by the author. Um, uh, someone who lives not too far away from you, Father Greg Boyle, who wrote Tattoos on the Heart and Barking to the Choir. He was a guest on the show. His audiobooks, his narration of his two audiobooks are so powerful. And uh, I've, I've read both books and I've listened to both books. It doesn't compare. And uh, I don't know if, if you've had this experience. Um, I love it when the author is reading, narrating his book, and he comes across something that's funny, and it makes him laugh in the narration, and then they keep, <laughs> they keep the laughter in. <laughs> I do. I do love it. And I think for us, too, like, one of the things is that we, we never want to be one of those boring, well, you know, boring publishers who's just doing the status quo. Like, mm-hmm. we always want to be innovating. And this was a natural next step for us, but something that we didn't have the capability to do, you know, back when we were uber busy. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really, I'm really thrilled with the way they came out. I can't wait to see the two new ones that so we're already working on those. And I know Derek will work his magic to have amazing sound effects and make it so fun. Like literally I cried when I saw some of my, my books. I mean, I audio recorded them. I did the pre-recording of me standing there with the book and in costume and whatever. But when he put it all together, it was like experiencing my own book for the first time. <laughs> it was so powerful. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know I, 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 I've had the, the, the pleasure of being at a live event with Sherry and Derek. And uh, talk about pulling out all the stops. It's there. Your booth becomes a, a, another world. It's just kids go <laughs> there and they enter into a different world. And it's just amazing to see. Thank you. Yeah, we've been innovating on that too. So when we do come out of this period of time, um, we hope to surprise and delight our fans in a bunch of new ways, uh, both in person and digitally. Yeah. So we've, we've got more things um, 
in the works. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's really really awesome. Um, so we've covered the little the, the, the little rose and the little monster. What little creatures are we going to meet in the future? Well, I am <laughs> I am working on a new one, but I'm not ready to share the details about it. But this will be my 2022 book, uh-huh. and it will be an eighth book in the little series. Awesome. So, um, I'm, it's a, it's a terrain that I have never explored before in my books. Okay. So anybody who's familiar with, um, the little series, it will be something brand new you've never seen before. And there will be a type of innovation built into it as well. Ooh. Um, I'm very excited about. Ooh. So want- we'll be reviewing more. Awesome. In the new year. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to challenge the folks that are listening right now. Get on, uh, you know, wherever you've downloaded this podcast from, go to the comments and make your prediction as to what Sherry might be writing, the, the next little thing she might be writing about. She gave you a couple of clues. I think that could be a lot of fun. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sherry, tr- please remind everybody again where they can go to find out more about your the little monster and your little series and all the other great stuff coming from your very, very imaginative mind. Oh, well, you can find us at whimsicalworldbooks.com, and you can find me at sherryfink.com. And on social media, we are at whimsicalworldbooks or at sherry underscore fink. And we hope that you will come and find us. We love to connect with our fans. We love cheering you on and seeing what cool stuff everybody is up to and inspiring people because that's why we do what we do. Awesome. We've had a great time speaking to the author of The Little Monster, the latest book in the little series from our guest, Sherry Fink. Hey, Sherry, thanks for being back with us tonight. Thank you so much. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Cindy Godot is returning to the show to celebrate Jelly Bean Adventures, the art of friendship, book four in her Jelly Bean Adventures series. She's also going to talk a little bit about uh, another book that she wrote. It's called Bunky and Lulu Find Their Place. And Cindy is also going to share with us what it's like to be a professional clown, something that I know a lot about and I love. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to help you tell the world all about it. One great way is to be a guest. Being a guest, it's fun. It's easy. It gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic book, and it doesn't cost a thing. All you need to do is go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page, scroll on down to be a guest. Oh, and while you're there, you also might want to check out our Certified Great Read program. If our panel of parents, teachers, and kids believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a number of really powerful promotional tools that can help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single month. Do you know that there are literally thousands of books published every single month? Thousands. No exaggerations. It's hard letting people know about your great book. We can help you. Check it out today. Go to readingwithyourkids.com and click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our favorite mermaid, our guest, Sherry Fink. Be sure to check out The Little Monster and also check out her Whimsical World Bedtime videos. Also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Michael Murphy. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.